Number 41, letter A. Calculate the angular momentum of an ice skater spinning at six revolutions per second given his moment of inertia is 0.4 kilogram meter squared. All right, so they're asking us for angular momentum. That is L in terms of the variable. And they tell us the moment of inertia and the angular velocity essentially. So I'm gonna use this formula over here on the right hand side. All right, this one is basically just a plug and chug. There's one little thing we gotta tweak though, okay? So angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular velocity. Remember, angular velocity must be in terms of radians per second. All right, so to find L, we need to know the moment of inertia, which they told us was 0.4, right? Kilogram meter squared. And then the angular velocity, they told it to us in terms of revolutions per second. So this would be six, 6.00 revolutions per second. To get rid of the revolutions, right, I'd have to multiply this by two pi radians per one revolution so that those units would cancel. All right, so it's essentially six times then two pi. All right, I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit so that just works out to be 12 pi. So that's 12 pi radians per second. That is the angular velocity. And now it's just simply multiply this out. So 0.4 times 12 times pi. And it works out to be about 15.1. If we consider rounding, that's kilogram meter squared per second. Great, so that takes care of letter A. Letter B. I wish all the problems were like this, right? Letter B. Um, he reduces his rate of spin, his angular velocity, by extending his arms and increasing his moment of inertia. Find the value of his moment of inertia if his angular velocity decreases to 1.25 revolutions per second. Um, okay, so basically, the you have to consider now, he's slowing down, right, because his arms are extending. However, though, what is being conserved? Angular, they didn't tell us anything about friction, right? So I'm going to assume that angular momentum is conserved. That being the case, I know that the, his, I, I could say his starting angular momentum should be equal to his final angular momentum. Now the start is what we just calculated in part A. So we already know this initial angular momentum. All right, that's gonna be the 0.4 multiplied by 12 pi. You can also write in there if you wanted, you know, the 15.1, that's fine too. And now the final value, right, of the angular momentum is going to be, we can now break that up into the final moment of inertia and the final angular velocity. Now they told us the angular velocity is 1.25 revolutions per second. Oh man, we gotta do that again, right? So we just have to do that conversion, that's easy, we already know, right? Revolutions to radians, we just have to multiply it by uh, two pi. And therefore I'm going to multiply this by two pi, and that would make it uh, 2.5 pi. Okay, and then just simply divide out now the 2.5 pi from both sides to find the new moment of inertia. And the pi's cancel, right? I mean, you can reduce, blah, blah, blah. So just take that answer, divide it by 2.5. And we get a value of about uh, 1.92. And that is kilogram, kilogram meter squared. All right, great. And now let's take a look at letter C. So letter C, whoops, letter C now. Um, it says, suppose, instead he keeps his arm in, so it's like the part A, okay? And he relies on the ice, right? Or allows friction of the ice to slow him to three revolutions per second. What is, or what average torque was exerted if it takes 15 seconds? All right. So I'm thinking about, I got to find torque, okay? And I know that there's some type of angular acceleration going on, right? Because the, uh, it says he's slowing down. All right, and there's friction involved, and therefore conservation of momentum is not held in this case. So I'm thinking about using this formula over here because I'm, again, looking to relate torques, and I understand that the angular velocity is changing, so I know there's an angular acceleration, right? So I, I start with this formula now, so I know that the sum of the torques, aka the average torque, would equal the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration. Now they told us that his arms were in and therefore the moment of inertia here is gonna be the same as the first part of 0.4. Okay, so we know that. And now how about the angular velocity? Well, excuse me, I mean the angular acceleration. Well, 
they told us that he initially starts at six revolutions per second, right? That's, I, I said it's basically part A is the beginning of this problem. So six revolutions per second he starts at, then he slows down to three revolutions per second and it takes him 15 seconds. So thinking about the angular acceleration formula over here, change in angular velocity over change in time, right? We can easily find that now, all right? So let's just plug that in. So in terms of the formula, so it's I multiplied by change in angular velocity over change in time. And now we can just start plugging in some values. I mean, we can also extend, uh, expand on the change in omega. Remember, we needed it in radians per second, but we already calculated it, right? This was the radians at the, at the beginning. And then this, we can just take this and multiply, remember, by two pi, all right? So the um, moment of inertia, <laughs> lost my train of thought. <clears throat> so the moment of inertia is four. The change in angular velocity is the final value, right? So it's gonna be three revolutions per second, multiply that by two pi, that's six pi radians, okay, per second, minus then the initial value of 12 pi, all divided by it takes 15 seconds to slow down. And we can just find it, right? So this is now going to be 0.4 times in parentheses, uh, six pi minus, actually one more parentheses, one second, six pi minus, 12 pi, and that's going to all be divided by 15. So we get about a half, right? I mean, it comes out to be negative, but the the torque is all dependent on, I mean, I chose my the signs here, the angular um, uh, velocities were positive, so totally dependent upon what picture I made. I didn't even make a picture on this one, but just take the absolute value, all right? Just, just write down the 0.5, so it's 0 0.503 or so, 0 0.5, oops, 0 0.503, and that is in torque, so that's Newton meter. All right. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. See you next time.